Hello Westman and welcome to one more edition of our Cafe Diversity Show. Um, on this show we take you on a weekly journey to meet the many people from all around the world that live in Westman and also the people that work to bring our communities together. My name is Jaime Chinchilla, I am the Cultural Diversity Facilitator for Westman Immigrant Services and today I have the pleasure to have with me here people from the global market of Brandon. So starting with Erin Gobe, she is the global market coordinator. Johanna Lesejo, who is a community member uh, of the steering committee of the global market. And also Naomi Ledbeater, who is the community development coordinator of Brandon Neighborhood Renewal Corporation. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Thanks. So let's start with you, Erin, um, because you're the current coordinator for the market. What is the global market? <laughs> the global market is, um, is a wonderful, open, safe space for local producers, artisans, musicians to come and uh, sell what they have to sell and really get people interested in local food production and local artisans and just really promote the wonderful, really support and promote local organizations within the community and bring everybody together. Okay, that sounds like a huge thing to me. Let's, let's break it down to a, a, a few things so people can understand mm -hmm. what the global market is. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned artists, vendors, mm -hmm. crafters, artisans, and a lot of different things. What is the difference of the global market which, with, for example, the other farmers market that we have uh, in Brandon and, and other areas, or flea markets, for example? Mm -hmm. How it how is it unique to our community? It really is unique to our community in the sense that it's the only outdoor market. Um, as of right now, we will have a nice big park for peace. It's an open market, so anybody can come sell anything. We're not limited to just handmade products. Um, we do have the stage for musicians to come and be involved with the community. We also have the Global Market Cafe. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, we are really just a lot more open and welcoming to whoever mm -hmm. wants to attend our market. Okay, now um, I want to ask Johanna because Johanna, you are one of the original members mm -hmm. the, of the minds that behind the idea of the global market. And I understand that the market has to do with multiculturalism, mm -hmm. with community building and all these interesting things. So what's the vision behind creating this market mm -hmm. two years ago? Okay. Um, well, I started actually five years ago in uh, creating the International Women's Food and Craft Market mm -hmm. with um, certainly a lot of help from other people. Um, we had the idea of bringing, giving an opportunity for some of our newest Canadians to be able to participate in Brandon community and being able to sell the foods that they made that, that are familiar to them from their home countries and, and a way different than um, the Lieutenant Governor's Festival where it's about presentation, but this would be more in, uh, an opportunity to interact. And so um, from that, there was always the idea that it could grow into um, a, a market situation where the women would have an opportunity to participate, you know, any week that they wanted to in, in more of a, a, like a farmer's market kind of situation, but where they could, um, again, cook their foods and, and have their crafts and be a part of the community and really learn to, um, or, or have the opportunity for Brandonites to meet them in a more relaxed, informal setting. So um, when the CMHA was gifted with the land at 12th and Rosser, and um, they said, you know, we'd like to have a community market. It's like, oh, perfect. This is, you know, really aligned with those of us who had um, created the women's market. And so we all came together to say, okay, how are we going to make this happen? So there was a committee that worked for a few years on planning and um, creating the, um, you know, the plans that had to go through the city and be approved and, and bringing in various groups from the community to say, you know, how do we want this to look and what is the intention behind it? 
And so the intention has always been about building community, about a, an opportunity for people to, um, yes, sell their products and, you know, and perhaps have some income in that way, but m more than anything about bringing people from various facets of the community together. So that includes, you know, our newest immigrant population with those obviously who've been here for a long time and um, so that we have activities, you know, things that, that Aaron has mentioned, but also activities to, for children and for, um, for different people to be able to interact. Uh, we've got Tai Chi groups coming down and demonstrating so that people in the community know about them. So there's a lot of different cultures, you know, in the community there, uh, that can come and have a place to to be and um, mm -hmm. so you're and saying that it is a lot more than just selling stuff at the yes, market, right? It's it's a whole it lot has more a whole than different that. community vision. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, Naomi, you um, are involved in a lot of different things because you are the community development coordinator of Brandon Neighborhood Renewal Corporations. What is the role of BNRC um, and the Global Market Committee, and what other organizations are there involved in? in bringing this to our community? Um, so part of what we do with the global market is um, help them find funding for any of the cultural programming they want to do or music or um, added benefits that they can bring into the market. We're also the funder of the coordinator position through Neighborhoods Alive. Um, so part of that is helping in development and strategic planning and business plan development and budgeting. Um, and looking at how to make the market sustainable long term. Um, the other thing that I help do on the steering committee is connect uh, Aaron, now the coordinator, with other groups in the community that might be able to partner in some way or that we can get involved um, and have different types of events or new events, bring back old events, see what, um, and really approach different groups just to broaden the global perspective. So it sounds like there is a lot of work behind the curtains, right? Like <laughs> people come and see the market and they are able to uh, buy all these interesting things, but there is a lot of community work behind it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, Erin, you are the current coordinator, but the market, the global market has been running for three years. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel on your role as a coordinator? What does it involve? What do you do every day to, to make this possible? Uh, every day is different. <laughs> and, and that's the fun part of it. A lot of my day is always just interacting with the vendors, interacting with lots of local organizations in the community, um, just trying to organize everybody to come down and help and participate and plan events and figuring out which vendors are coming and making sure everything's in place. So a lot of my day is just working alongside with the vendors and local community organizations. And then also we work with advertising and everything else that goes along with the market. Right now we're laying sod. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've been laying brick at the market and just upgrading the market site and expanding mm -hmm. it just to make it more welcoming and inviting and give everybody the space that we can actually have a really fun time. And I mean, the market's just been a wonderful thing. I've been involved with it as a vendor since the beginning. And it, um, when it started and I mean just to see how it's evolved over the past three years it's just been amazing and I'm so excited to be part of it now as a coordinator. Now let's say I'm a vendor mm -hmm. or somebody else is, is a, a vendor. How do I contact you and how can I become a global market vendor? It's pretty simple. Um, you can call me at my phone number. It's 204-573-8046. Or you can email the global market at globalmarketbrandon at, at gmail.com. And I'll send you out the application form. And you can fill it out. And I'll take a look at it. If it's something that we say, yes, this is wonderful. We would love for you to be part of it. Um, you're in. <laughs> now, are you looking for any specific kind of vendors? Or everyone is in, you know? open to any kind yeah, of vendor? Yeah, we, uh, we welcome all vendors. We welcome, obviously, um, veggie producers, baked goods, um, artisans, jewelry, paintings. We also welcome um, people who have imported items. So, I mean, we're really not limited to what can be sold at the market. In, on a regular market day, and mm -hmm. let's start by asking the schedule of the market, and, and then what can people find on those days when, once they come 
you know, a morning or an afternoon to the market? So our regular market days are Thursday evenings from 4 till 7 and Saturday mornings from 9 till 1. If you were to come down on a typical Thursday evening, um, you'll find Man Apiaries there with her baked goods and with the honey. Um, you'll also find some gluten-free baking, some produce by Gemma's Garden. They'll always be there on the Thursdays. And then also we have local jewelry artisans that will be there. Um, that's typically the mainstays that you'll find on a Thursday evening. We also have the little red barn coming on a Thursday. Um, and then Saturday morning, it's, it's everything. It's everything from vegetables to fruit to paintings to the international women coming with their delicious food. They're going to be cooking to <laughs> anything and everything. <laughs> it's wide open. I mean, it's a, I get calls every day asking if they can book, and it's a new vendor coming in with something new that I've never mm -hmm. seen. We have a lady coming with wonderful oils this, um, this Saturday. So it's... Mm -hmm. And then a lady's coming on Thursday to do haircuts and Reiki, you know, so it's, it's really wide open. <laughs> we never know what we're going to get. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know you work very hard to make it exciting for yeah. people, so we're going to talk later about all the events that you yes. have planned and that have happened and will happen in this market. But I want to go back to Johanna now, and um, Johanna, I'm, I'm really interested on the concept of the market. You have mentioned the Women's International Food and Craft Market. Mm -hmm and how it all came together and now you see the two things working together. Um, what what um, are some of the challenges that you found in trying to put uh, all these ideas together and make mm. it possible? Mm -hmm. Well, there certainly have been challenges. Um, one for the, um, and we're talking about the women's market specifically, uh, cooking. We've had to, of course, rent kitchens in the community so that you know the the food is um, acceptable and that so that's always uh, you know having to maneuver and figure out times and bringing it back and forth into the market and so that's something that we're hoping will be changed by next summer because we're applying for money to build a community kitchen that will be part of the market that um, not just the women but others in the community will be able to use and will be able to have classes to teach different cooking styles and things of that nature. Um, sometimes communication, language, um, mm -hmm. some of the women don't speak English very well and so we've been fortunate to have um, those in their communities to work with, you know, so that there can be some translation going on in that. But, you know, language barriers will be on the words. There's, there's a, a cultural difference sometimes, a, a lack of perhaps understanding why our rules are the way they are because they're not the same in their countries of origin. And I often um, am thinking the way they are. I wonder why our rules are as strict as they are. But, you know, we all accept that that's what the rules are, so we learn how to go with it. Now, when you talk about rules, I imagine that they have to do with making sure also that everything that you sell at both markets it's safe and Absolutely. it's healthy and it follows yes. the regulations. We'll work very closely with the health inspector and mm -hmm. you know we make sure that everything's done according to her requirements and she comes and she checks and mm -hmm. yes. So it's really good for people to come and mm -hmm. you know be able to know that and and, and you know, be safe and, mm -hmm. and enjoy all these yes. different meals without And these different foods that you obviously can't get in brand in any other way. You know, we have you know, pupusas from El Salvador and arepas from Colombia and, you know, different Chinese food that you'll find in the restaurants and Russian baking and Greek pastries and, you know, all of these things that, you know, we just don't get to have otherwise. Mm -hmm. so. Now, Naomi, you, on top of being the community development coordinator, you also are one of the former coordinators for the global market. So you had to go through all this process of, you know, seeing <laughs> this kid growing up and um, you were also really good at finding you know ways to make it grow what are some of those ways because I hear you're really good at grant writing and trying to find funding <laughs> for people um, I guess my I got the second year of the market so I it would kind of be like having a teenager um, so we did a lot of experiments some mm -hmm. things worked really well and other things didn't um, I learned really quickly that the best thing I could do was just talk to people in the community and because sometimes 
if all you need is a specific thing, an organization will donate it. You don't always have to write a grant to get really great programming, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I also learned that just having open connections to places like ACC or the university got you lots of access to students who want to do fun things, who don't necessarily need to get paid for them, but they might be musicians that want to busk or mm -hmm. um, a student that wants to come do a community music demonstration or something like that. So I just, we did a lot of experimenting and it was a lot of fun. Um, and I really did learn how to write grants and how to, that was stuff that I learned while I was at the market and maybe a little before, but um, the best thing I learned, I think, was just how to communicate with people from all different walks of life and different backgrounds. Now, one of the things I love is walking, you know, by 12th Street and Russell Avenue in the corner of the market because every time you go, you see something different going on. They're building something, they're improving something. What are some of the moments you remember of uh, the building of the global market? People go now and they it's still going on, you know, all the improving process, but it started, you know, as just a little corner in the middle of downtown. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit of that story? Um, well, we started, there were a few things that happened, like um, the Brandon Inn got torn down and they needed somewhere for the brick to go, so they dropped it off at the market. We weren't really sure what we were going to do with it, um, so we actually bricked a piece of the market last year um, and then decided that it was a lot easier to do just a walkway rather than the whole market in brick. Um, so that was one of the things. The other thing that was really neat was getting the grant for the water feature, which is going to be gorgeous when it's finished. Um, and that, the placement of that sort of led to a redesign of the site so that the park can be in the middle rather than behind the row of um, vendor booths, which will make it more accessible and I know when I looked at the plans, I kind of thought, you know, if I was a mom and I had kids, I'd want them to be able to play in the park, but I'd also want to be able to go get my groceries. And if the park's in the center, you know that the community's sort of looking out for everybody in the middle, too. Mm -hmm. um, and we did some really great just community programming, and we figured out that the more kid-friendly activities you have, the more people come to the market. Mm -hmm. So, Erin, um, uh, let's go back to what we were talking before about everything that's going on this season mm -hmm. because the, the global market has big plans to make it exciting and interesting for people. Not only go and buy your groceries and your veggies, but also enjoy a community mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. where people can get together. Yeah. What are some of those events that you have planned for, for the community? Um, we have lots going on and we really couldn't do it out without the community support. It's just people have come on board and they just want to help out with whatever they can. So one of the main things that we have happening this year is that with the help of the BNRC we're going to have music every Thursday evening from 5 to 7. Um, so that's one big thing that we have planned. The other ones that we have planned, we, uh, we're having a big culture days celebration or fair trade town celebration because the global market's a fair trade town or a fair trade event. We have Third Story Studios coming down to do photography lessons with the kids. We have the art gallery coming. We have buskers and street performers wanting to come down just to perform. We have Tai Chi demonstrations. We have some belly dancing. We have some, oh boy, lots, <laughs> lots. And it keeps changing. It keeps changing almost every week. And we're bringing back the Pickle Fest in October. <laughs> So lots of planning and lots of fun things to happen. So if people want to find out what's going on for this week or next week, for example, how can they do that? <laughs> well, if you're walking downtown, I'm usually sitting at the market helping out somehow. So you can come talk to me at any time or call me. Um, you can also check out our website at globalmarketbrandon.com and uh, always email or Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. So you are keeping up with all the social media stuff and making. I'm trying, and Naomi's been a great help mm -hmm. too. I mean, like I said, we couldn't do it without everybody getting behind us and just wanting to help out. I mean, we have students from the university wanting to come and do the posters just because they love the market and they don't make anything to sell, but they want to contribute. So they're going to be doing the posters for us for all these events. So I mean, we really can do it without everybody else. Now, you, you've mentioned that you partnered with uh, some other events and organizations such as the Women's Market mm -hmm. and um, the Culture Days. Mm -hmm. I know that you also do um, open the market while the cruise nights are going on. 
Yeah. We, yes, our regular market days on Thursday evenings does coincide with the cruise nights, which is, um, which is rather exciting and rather busy. <laughs> but it's just, it's been great. I mean, just the exposure of having the cruise nights along with the global market just gets more people to the market and know what we're about and how to be involved and see, you know, all the vendors and artisans and producers and all the wonderful cultures and everything that take place in this community. and learn about you know all the other local community organizations like we have the marquis project in Ten Thousand villages and forbidden flavors helping us out with the global market cafe which is new this year so i mean just having all those people on cruise night really just adds to the knowledge and the education and the experience and the awareness of what the market is and where we are now what are the plans regarding the um, this season you just started um, by the end of June, and now you plan to be open in the full summer. When, do you, when does the global market close? Uh, <laughs> well, we close for the summer at for the summer at the end of September, um, and then for the month of October, we're just going to be doing Saturday morning markets from nine till one, and then beginning of November, we're actually starting our first winter global market. So that will carry us on through the winter, and then we start up again <laughs> next summer for the global market in the summer. Which, which, by the way, will be inside. Yes, it is inside. Yes, We're not going to. I, I, I want to touch on that. We're not going to make people be outside at minus 40 <laughs> buying vegetables or jewelry or anything. Yes, and, and I want to expand on that because that has to do with the expansion and sustainability plans for the market. So, yes. being a member of this uh, steering committee, mm -hmm. how do you see this? Unfolding in the future, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what, what are right. the sustainability, how is this going to grow and, you know, it's a challenge to make something that's already great being right. better and better every time. It is, and, and it does need to be self-sustaining, you mm -hmm. know, at a certain point we can't continue to get grants, we, it has to run by itself and so we need Brandon to support it. We absolutely need people just to come down and participate in the market and, and, and that will do it. Um, the winter market, the CMHA is in their um, Reese Fit store. They're turning their store around and so that the entrance, the main entrance will, will become on the 12th Street side of the store. And so it will be that you go into the 12th Street side and, um, and that's where the winter market, yeah. the space that, that um, now they use as their office will be turned into a space where the winter market will occur because they're moving over into another building. So, so we'll be able to have um, obviously not fresh vegetables to the ex same extent as um, as in the summer, but certainly crafts and the international women's market will be a part of that, and um, any kind of other um, you know baking and and gems and different things of that nature. So, you know, hopefully as we continue and grow, and we are really hoping we have our community kitchen by next spring, um, and, and that will also feed into all of this happening and just building more community projects in that area. So it feels like the plan is to have a permanent market area or marketplace mm -hmm. for, yeah, for yeah people in Brandon and Westman, right? Yeah, a place where to... people can always come and meet and, mm -hmm. you know, be together. And that's what this summer, expanding the market so that we have this grass area, this park in the middle, so that people can come and spend time down there, you know, and, and get a cup of coffee and sit down and have conversations with people that they haven't met otherwise or, or you know, or from different cultures. And it's like, oh, Oh, so who are you rooting for in the World Cup or whatever it happens to be? Mm -hmm. right. So just mm -hmm. a community gathering place where mm -hmm. people can always come and enjoy yeah. and um, you know go through all the vendors and all that. Now, Naomi, um, you are part of the community, as I said before, and you were a former coordinator. I want to know, I'd like to know who are some of the other players, because I know the city of Brandon has been very supportive supportive of mm -hmm. this and, and some organizations and also volunteers such as Johanna of course mm -hmm. but um, who are those other organizations? Um, so some of the other organizations on the steering committee are the Brandon Literacy Council, um, Renaissance Brandon and then we also have two vendors that are on the steering committee as well so that there's vendor input as well from the community and from people who actually 
sell things at the market, not just organizations. Um, and then the city of Brandon as well. And um, if people want to volunteer or help the market, because we have mentioned this a, a couple of times now, what are some of the areas people can come and help the market with um, and, and volunteer? Well, <laughs> right now, if they want to come down and lay sod, <laughs> you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. we're always fixing up and trying to maintain and the market site. So that's always an ongoing process. Um, if they want to volunteer, I mean, even if it's just coming down to help set up the sound system for the musicians or wanting to come weed the gardens or, you know, help set up tables or come down and busk and street perform. I mean, we can, if somebody's willing to donate some time, we'll find a project for them for sure, even if it's just doing some of the social media or, mm -hmm. you know, just getting out in the community and just sitting in the green space and talking with people. I mean, anything is... And Anything you have mentioned donations. That's really important because people can not only volunteer, but the market has also been, you know, an object of some very nice donations from community members mm -hmm. and business owners mm -hmm. that are, you know, are collaborating to have this great idea um, yeah. mm -hmm. come to fruition. So, how can how could people come and, and help if they want to donate something? Um, like I said, they can even just give me a call or email me or the market. They can swing by our offices at 12th and Rosser. Um, I know like when we got the funding from the BNRC to do the music every Thursday evening, well, Faders generously is letting us use the sound system. They've donated the sound system for us to use. And Forbidden Flavors with the cafe, they've donated um, all the equipment for us to use for this summer. So I mean, there's so many things that we'll absolutely <laughs> take and we'll figure out a use for. Or, I mean, if somebody wants to donate, we'll definitely not let it go to waste. And that's really and nice. Money and money, money too. too. <laughs> mm. yeah. Yes, and money too. Money too. <laughs> Cash yeah. is a very good thing. <laughs> yes. Yes, and the market has had that, that kind of support in the past because mm -hmm. I've seen, you know, some of the boards that you put together with all the donators and mm -hmm. all the businesses that have come together um, to support this idea. Mm -hmm. Now, the global market also has to do with something that it's always in the mind of Brandon, it's, which is downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We always, you know, are trying to figure out how to make downtown come to life again and how to improve the experience of people going downtown. Yes. How do you see the market uh, playing that role? Oh, that's absolutely one very big piece of it, you know, because it does bring people downtown. Mm -hmm. It brings a lot of people down, especially, you know, some Thursday nights, but Saturday mornings, it's, you know, it's a lot. Though I have to say that Thursday night with the, the um, uh, cruise night mm -hmm. was just wonderful, where we had um, yeah, again, a few of the women from the international market and the whole global market going and the cruise night people and, and it was alive and vibrant and there's music being played and it's like, yes, this is what we want, downtown Brandon. So the more we can bring people down to participate in different activities, you know, not just to pick up your vegetables, but to, to come and stay for a while and talk and be active then, you know, then I think they'll start to see, well, this is a good place to be, you know. Mm -hmm. Downtown Brandon is lovely. Yes, yeah. and I think yeah. after hearing every, all uh, the global market is about, we can only hope that it grows, it mm -hmm. gets better, mm -hmm. and it keeps growing with the help of everyone in the community. So I really want to thank you for giving us the chance to mm -hmm. know more about the market today, for coming today, mm -hmm. and for speaking with me, um, having this wonderful conversation. Thanks again. Thank you. This is Café Diversity. My name is Jaime Chinchilla, and this show is brought to you by Westman Immigrant Services and Westman Communication Group. Thanks for watching, and see you next week. <laughs>